Okay, we're going to write remove and reverse, and the focus here is on what's ex what exactly is happening with the pairs in Racket. So here's a list call and a cons call. The list call actually makes separate calls to cons. What we see on the far right, this type of pair, what ha must have happened in this list call is a call to something like four in the empty list, just like we have at the bottom here. In Racket, we never modify pairs. You can modify pairs, but we don't modify pairs. So here I have list A and list B. Again, those are calling cons, because cons is what makes those pairs. When I call define C to be append of A and B, I want to look at what happens to each of the pairs in this situation. So what happens is I get this new two pairs that copy the first argument. So the first argument to append, which is A, I make copies of each of those pairs, and I put the rest of that pair pointing to B, which was the second argument. So here I still didn't make any changes to any pairs. Whenever I needed to modify what something pointed to, I made a new pair. So a pen makes a copy of the first argument and points the last pair to the second argument. Here's a function called copy. Take a second and read that. What I'm showing here is uh, the difference between equal, eq, and the equal sign. So let's pretend I have this list A. And then I make a copy of that, calling this copy function. Now I can check if these two things are equal, which returns true. This is checking logical equivalence. I can check if they're EQ, which is checking if they're literally the same set of pairs, and that returns false. And I can check if they're equals with the equal sign, uh, which is a contract violation. It says expected a number. So hopefully those error messages are helpful for you in terms of communicating what Racket is expecting. And then here's some notes about what each of these, the differences between each of these. Next we're going to write remove. The goal of remove is to remove some element from a list. And actually we're only going to remove one copy of it. So in this last example, where I have two copies of 42, I'm only going to remove the first copy and the second copy will stay there. Again, on the top, I have the same copy function. And on the bottom, I have the exact same copy function, but instead of using an if, I've written it with a cond. The reason why I've written it with a cond is because I'm going to use this to write remove, and remove has a few cases. The first, which is in the base case, is if I'm done with the list, I've, I have a null list, and I'm still just going to return the empty list, like we can see in this top test case. The next case is if the first thing in that list is equal to what I'm looking for. In that case, I want to remove it. Otherwise, I want to keep going and keep looking for that element. So I'm going to modify copy. This is now going to be remove. And I'm also going to add in another thing, which is the element E, which I'm looking for. In my recursive call, I need to do the same thing. So I'm going to call remove here, and I'm going to pass in the element E. Okay. So the case where I just keep going, this else case, works as intended. I can cons the first onto the remove E of the rest of the list. If I assume that remove works, that should work. So the case I need to worry about is the case where the first is equal to E, which I'm looking for. So I'll check if E is equal to the first of L. If those are equal, then what I want to do is I want to remove that element. So I'm not going to include the first of L in the remaining um, answer. All I need to return is rest of L. That will have that first element removed. I don't need to make a recursive call here because I only want to remove the value E once. Next, I'm going to write reverse starting with this base of copy. So reverse should reverse all of the elements in the list, and I assume here that I'm working with a flat list. I'll start by brainstorming at the bottom, which has a call to reverse with 1, 2, 3. I know that what I should get back is the list 3, 2, 1, 
and I'm assuming I'm going to make a, a recursive call on the rest. This recursive call on the rest is going to return 3, 2, just by assuming that my recursion works. I also have this element 1, and I need to figure out how to take these two things and get back 3, 2, 1. That's my primary problem. You'll notice also that here the one, the first of the list, is on the other side. So actually I'm going to reverse the order of these two things so that I can put the recursive call before the first of the list. If I want to call append here, what I need to do is I need two lists. So I actually have to make my first of a list a list. Otherwise I'm not able to call append but this will work. Let's take a look at how to write that code. Again, I need to reverse these two things. I'll start by rewriting my function call, reverse. And now I know my combiner from looking at my test case is going to be append. What I'm going to be appending is the reverse of the rest of the list. And the thing that goes on the other side of that, the thing that's going to go on the end, is first of L. But again, first of L might just be a single element and not a list. So I need to call list on this and a bunch of parentheses. So that I can have both of these be a list and I don't lose any other information.